The All Progressive Congress and the People's Democratic Party, PDP, seem to be at a crossroad over which geopolitical zone of the country should produce the next president come 2023. And six Anambra lawmakers defect from the APC or to the APC from APCA. Interesting times, but this is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anna Cole. Ahead of 2023 election cycle, the All Progressive Congress, APC, and the People's Democratic Party, PDP, are at a crossroad over which geopolitical zone of the country should produce the next president in 2023. Now, joining us to discuss this is former special advisor to the River State Governor, Punabo Inko Taria, and political analyst, Biodu Shoumi, who will be joining us much later. Thank you very much, Mr. Taria, for joining us. Yes, thank you very much, Marianne. Good evening. Thank you. Um, so it's very interesting um, for us to be talking about both parties at the same time. I mean, um, for those of us who've been following the political happenings in the country, we can see that um, both the APC and the PDP seem to be having their internal party wranglings. But why does it seem that both parties, just like I said at the beginning of the show, are at a crossroad and seemingly confused as to what zone uh, they think the president should come from. Shouldn't have, uh, this have been a, a, a plan or a clearly thought out, you know, strategy before, you know, the convention even approaches? Well, um, not necessarily, because the party is uh, populated by people from different political zones and uh, people with different political interests. You know, politics is all about interest. There is no permanent friend, no permanent enemy, but permanent interest. So it's all about interest. And so um, everybody will want to push his interest, project his own interest. And at times like this, that they come together and reach accommodation agreement on which zone should take the presidency and to a very large extent also determine uh, the party chairmanship and um, uh, who and who might go for governorship. They've already started deciding that right now as, as we speak because the political hostings have started. And uh, these are issues that, especially the presidency and the chairmanship of the party, these are issues that must be decided uh, before the convention of any political party. Because that could determine where the chairmanship will come, where the chairman of that party will come from, and where the president, uh, the presidential candidate of that party will come from. So it's quite, it's quite normal. I mean, you don't, you don't expect them to decide on those issues uh, a year ago. No, it's, it's at this time, at this point in time, that they are going to decide on such matters. Okay, uh, Mr. Shoumi, thank you very much for joining us. There are certain people who feel like from the body language of the APC that they might just be zoning uh, the presidential ticket to the south of the country. Do you see any signs that might buttress that point or uh, do you think different? Very clear that um, uh, in APC, they didn't have a formal agreement or it's not written in the constitution um, that they should zone. But um, in PDP, they in the case of APC, there are two factors that will account for two. One is the unwritten agreement, which allegedly uh, was reached with um, Ashwaju Bora Tinubu, the national leader, you know, as attest attested to by um, El Rufai and some other personalities in APC. And the second factor is the prevailing circumstances, you know. Um, uh, which is highly in favor of a certain candidate emerging uh, from the APC, uh, because I do not see how APC can sell a Northern candidate against the background you know, of the promise to have a structuring which are and the headsmen where clearly the voices of leading Northerners were not condemning. Uh, I think we're having connection issues with you, Mr. Shomi. Um if you can, if you can take that line again, because we had some issues with uh, our internet connection. The 
it's quite clear that when you look at all the indi indicators, uh, one is the internal agreement um, attested to by leading party shifters, including the governor of Kaduna State, that they had with um, Ashwajibola Tinubu, um, that um, they would consider him um, for the next election. The second factor, you know, is the issue of the prevailing tension in the country between the North and South, and the fact that many Northern leaders were either in support um, of um, uh, co northerners the, the Fulani X-Men, or were silent. They were not audible enough in terms of condemning the invasion and the destruction of uh, lives and properties you know, of people um, across the country, even though it's happening in the North too. So those two factors uh, will combine to ensure that APC would likely in the in a bid to hold on to power, you know, field a certain candidate. The a, the party did not have any zoning agreement written in its constitution, but it has always been very sensitive to um, tensions, you know, partic particularly ethnic tensions within the country. And I think that is likely going to be the case. But they're waiting for PDP to actually announce its own zoning arrangement. Um, if PDP is speaking from the north, they certainly will. Um, pick a candidate from the south, hoping that uh, what is an um, appeal would uh, the for the Yama Jews would um, swing it in their favor. Hmm. Let me come back to you, uh, Opuna, but the, the PDP is obviously also on this table of party, inter party drama, like we said earlier on, and leadership, you know, tussle. Although they seem to have a provision for zoning in their party agreement as opposed to the APC, um, where do you think they will be eyeing? Do you support Mr. Show with me saying that he might just be uh, the South again? And, and who could be the people that the PDP would be, um, or rather the people who could be the hopefuls for that presidential ticket, if you have any idea? Well, when you talk of uh, zoning, zoning is ideal to ensure fairness, equity. And um, to ensure that all the three political zones at least could have uh, access to presidency. Because, you know, politics is all about numerical strength. And if you go based on numerical strength, then the North will forever produce the president. Unless the other, the South and the East will come together. The West, sorry, will come together. And the North can also. Uh, uh, um, collaborate with any other zone. All they need is just a fraction of this other zone. Uh, I'm sorry, we we lost uh, Inkotara. Let's go back to Mr. Shomi. Um, has there been a precedence of where a party, in a political party, a president had said he would hand over to a certain person uh, to be the presidential candidate for the party and kept to it? Or is it that like you said, maybe it's just going to be a lot of people throwing their hats into the ring. Let's not forget the Kogi State governor has been showing interest in running for that same party uh, presidential ticket. Um, do you see that gentleman's agreement for 2019 in the APC uh, taking its pride of place or something different happening? Yeah. Mm. Well, when you look at it, nobody can say precisely who the APC will field as his candidate. But what is clear to me is that I do not, I don't think the Kogi State Governor Yahya Beno stand a chance, you know, in this game of chess. You only need to look at all the factors. Um, why doesn't he stand a chance? You know, why, why doesn't he stand a chance? Yes, yeah, you look, look at the factors at play. One, there is a huge clamor in the country, you know, for a certain president. We have major issues with um, um, uh, headsmen leading to ethnic tensions between the South and the north, and the Ayabelo's Kogi state is precisely in the north. Obviously, it will be seen to be a sidekick. You know, it's an attempt by the north, you know, to retain power um, by any means, rather than power shifting uh, to the south. We also know that agitations for um, for for secession um, is higher, you know, in some sections of the south, and also we have it in the other section. People are clamoring, 
saying we must um, uh, they want a separate country of their own. So how do you douse those um, agitations if power will remain in the north? Whether we call it uh, north central, as in Kogi State, or in the corner, uh, rather it will only fuel, you know, the demand, you know, for 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 a separate state or for 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 secession in Nigeria. So in order to arrest our drift already, which is we are the precipice, uh, I don't think the APC will be irresponsible by retaining, you know, uh, a northern candidate as its um, uh, presidential candidate. The most likely thing, given all indices, is that um, uh, they will try and placate, you know, feelings in the south and allow power, you know, to move. Probably to uh, one of their cronies or somebody they have a gentleman's agreement with. I don't know who will emerge. But what is clear to me is that I don't think a northern candidate will emerge as APC flag bearer. Mm, you sound so certain. Um, let me see if we, I can go back to uh, Inkotaria. I asked a question about the PDP and who you think that uh, possible candidates uh, in the areas that they're zoning it to. Some people believe the PDP will be zoning to the north, while others think the PDP will be zoning to the south. But as we speak, the party in itself is still unable to retain its party chairman. One minute he's the party chairman, the next minute another court order is asking him not to parade himself as the party chairman. So again, how easy does it make it for the you know, normal person to call where the PDP's um, you know, zoning is going to? Okay. Um... It, is, it will be a political expedient for the PDP to zone, not just the PDP, the PDP and the APC to zone the presidency to the south. Because uh, the sitting president is from the north, and it's usually between the north and south. Now, when you talk of the south, the Eurobars are included. And then, because when you talk of the east, it's a different zone altogether. You have the uh, southwest, that's why it is referred to as the southwest. So if you talk about the south, the Europe are also included. And then if you talk about the south, south. But it will be why for the politically for the party or any serious party to zoom the presidency to the south. Um, let's talk about justice, fairness, and fair play within the party. And I'm going to ask this same question to Mr. Show me to speak about the APC and um, the PDP. Uh, is there some form of justice, equity, and fair play? Because this is what mo most Nigerians are asking in terms of um, zoning in the party. And we know that um, the national conventions for the different parties are coming up. Uh, and we've also seen a lot of people leave the uh, PDP to the APC. Um, who are these people that might be able to f hold that flag if, let's say, for example, the party is zoning to the south? Who are the possible candidates who will be vying for that position? Talking of fairness and justice, uh, it's, a, it's a subjective thing because uh, first and foremost, the party will have to agree on uh, where their chairman will come from. Is it going to be from the south, from the north, and so on? So the party will agree. You're going to have a convention. It's all about uh, lobbying. It's all about lobbying. And... Uh, it's a very large extent, because when you talk about refugee fairness and justice, you are talking about the distribution of portfolios in the party. And you are talking about the chairman, the deputy national chairman. Of course, when it comes to the deputies, you have the deputies from the three zones, then you have the national community secretary and so on. So the key position is actually the chairman, because that will determine, that is the determining factor. Where the chairman will come from, will determine where his deputies will come from, where uh, the other political office holders will come from, and where the president, presidential candidate, will also come from. And the party will agree, even before the convention. Of course, there are going to be dissenting voices, no doubt about that. Some will be advanced to it, but uh, the, the, convention, the convention will be the deciding factor. So when you talk of fairness, equity, I don't think you can actually accuse uh, the major political parties of being unfair or not being just. I don't think so. Because the convention will be deciding factor. And before the convention, of course, the lobbying will take place. And once the chairman gets it, for example, now the, the present chairman that is on suspension, second the second of the PDP, is uh, uh, from River State, from the south-south. So if the chairmanship is zoned 
to the south for two terms. Of course, the next chairman will come from the south. But if it's a one term, one term thing, then the next chairman might come from the north. But it is planned on where the presidential candidate will come from. That is the major deciding factor in who we are, um, in where the chairman of the candidate will come from. Of, of the yes, the uh, chairman of the party will come from okay. the presidential candidate, and the, the the presidential candidate decides the chairman of the party. The chairman of the party decides the party. So once the chairman of the party elected, automatically you can extrapolate where the chairman, the presidential candidate will come from. It is simple right. if you are a politician. Okay. All right, Mr. Show me. This question is for you. Some pundits have said that um, you know the APC and the PDP, both parties, are keeping tabs on each other uh, to see who, um, what party is pushing for, and who the tentative candidates are for all of the different positions within their parties, um, and and they want to see if they can outsmart one another so that they can either have the upper hand come twenty twenty three. What are your thoughts about this? Is is it really what is happening? Yeah, you see, I guess the question is still about the fairness and justice. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Now, I don't share my colleague's viewpoint on this issue. Um, yes, he's right to say that um, wherever the chairman comes from will inform some other uh, positions. But um, that will not be a factor because what you see is that in PDP, they actually think about where the president is coming from first before deciding where the chairman will come from. And then they go to the convention and then make that, you know, uh, a reality. Um, in the case of um, PDP, it's to totally different from EPC. PDP has a zoning arrangement, you know, written in their constitution. If you go back to it, you realize that Obasanjo from the south was president, then followed by Yeragua from the north, then followed by Jonathan from the south. And that was why Atiku emerged as a flag bearer at the last election um, um, uh, on the platform of PDP. So I can see the same situation. I can see the cost between Tambuwal and um, Atiku, you know, at the next election, you know, to represent the PDP. So it's most likely or more likely than not, that a Northerner would uh, take the ticket of the PDP. Now, the issue is this. How do they uh, intend, you know, to gain the trust of the people in the South? Uh, that is a different thing completely. And for PDP, that would be a just arrangement, because they will argue that we have been rotating it north, south, north, south, north, south. Um, whereas in APC, that is not the situation. This is the first time they have political power, and they now need to move power to another, you know, section of the country, um, particularly the South. So I think um, these issues are very, very clear. The issue of justice and equity, you know, there's no place for that in politics. It's political calculations hmm. about who will win the elections. Both parties are waiting to see who will first make the first move, and then they can now pounce on it and say, yeah, we are the party to represent Northern interest or a party to represent um, Southern interest within the Nigerian uh, equation. So I think that's the situation which we are faced with currently. All right. Un unfortunately, we have to wrap up the conversation. Uh, no thanks to the bad connection. Uh, Biodo Shomi is a political analyst. Oponabot Imko Tara is a former special advisor to the government of River State. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for being part of the My conversation. Pleasure. Well, apologies for all the connection issues we've had today. We promise that on Monday we will have a great show on Plus Politics. I am Mariana Kuhn. Have a good evening.